What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents coming at you with another video. And today we are gonna to talk specifically about the topic of thermal throttling and the GTX 1080. Now I can hear you already. What do you mean thermal throttling? Nvidia showed a demo where it was only running 67C. So today we're gonna to talk about thermal throttling and why pretty much every single reviewer on YouTube with the 1080 was a little bit shocked about the high temperatures that the Founders Edition card was demonstrating. And I'm gonna show you what's happening and pretty much how I got around it with doing my benchmarks because a lot of people were like, what the hell, Jay? Your temps are not as, as high as others were saying. So with that said, let's get started. The Mastercase 5 and Mastercase 5 Pro from Cooler Master combines modularity with creativity, giving you the freedom to build it your way. Make it yours by clicking the link down in the description. Now, what is thermal throttling? Now, if you're really new, you probably have no idea what that is. If you're an advanced user, you're like, yeah, I know what it is, just get on with it. So for that, there's a little slider bar. Just click forward if you're, you know, advanced user. Now, thermal throttling exists on CPUs and GPUs together where the software or, you know, the actual controller or BIOS, whatever you want to call it, will try to save itself from dying a high temperature death by dialing back both voltages and frequencies to keep the temperatures below a certain target. Now the GTX 1080 ships with a temperature target of 83 degrees Celsius. And what that means is go ahead and ramp up the speed automatically to whatever you want. But as soon as it hits 83, oh, you better start backing things off to get it in check. Now when it comes to the Nvidia demonstration, obviously they weren't doing live gaming when they hit that 67C while overclocked. And for all we know, they could have had the fans running at 100% on the card. Uh, again, we didn't see the test rig. We only saw the precision overlay showing 67C and 2114 megahertz. Again, we have no idea what the load was like. We couldn't see CPU load, and that was just a 3D rendering uh, of a 3D image. It wasn't actually playing any games. So that's something to keep in, in mind. So that's why when myself and a lot of other reviewers, we all started kind of talking behind the scenes with each other as we were doing our testing, like, hey, are you noticing your card getting really hot? And it was like, wow, I thought it was just mine. And it turns out everybody was complaining about high temperatures because we expected it to be a lot lower. Now, 16 nanometer FinFET is a very, very small chip. And what that means is you're gonna have a lot of focused heat. So the idea of 67C under load was really kind of mind boggling because with it being so small and focused, we expected the temperatures to actually be kind of hot. <laughs> turns out they, uh, they kind of are. Now the folks over at Gamers Nexus actually did a Frankenstein build where they noticed they had high heat, so what they did was they ripped a hybrid cooler off of an EVGA card, stuck it on their 1080 to see what would happen and if that would fix thermal throttling. But what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna turn around here, I'm gonna do some live gaming with an overlay, I'm gonna show you the throttling in progress, and then I'm gonna show you pretty much what's happening as it's thermal throttling, how far it's coming down, and then how uh, I got around it without having to rip off the cooler and do anything custom. But don't worry, we are gonna be ripping off the cooler because of course I've got my uh, GTX 1080 full cover water block from EK. First one off the assembly line, baby. Oh yeah, and if you saw that picture that EK sent out with the block on it with the green fluid, that was my card and that was this block. Wow. Yeah, mind blown, right? Transition. All right, so we're gonna be doing this test here with some Crisis 3 because it's pretty demanding. Um, and I've got the settings set up pretty much to where I would assume people with a 1080 would put it, which is very high preset with a 4X MSAA, and I'm running at 1440p. Uh, so here's what we've got. We've got OSD here up from Afterburner, and we've got, on the starting from the left here, that top left is the power limit. That's the percentage of power limit. What that means is if it exceeds the number that is preset, whether it be 100, uh, obviously 100% power envelope, if it starts to go higher than that 100% power draw that's set from in the BIOS, then it's gonna start limiting clocks and things to try and keep it under that 100%. Uh, obviously, this is our GPU temperature here. We're running at 44C in the menu. This next one here is our GPU utilization or usage. So we're only sitting at 30% utilization in the menu. This is the fan speed, core clock, and then FPS. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play the game uh, with the GPU sitting here, you know, not too hot. It hasn't heat soaked or anything, but I do have the room, the room fairly closed up. The door is closed, the AC vent is off, and the window is closed. So the temperature in this room is starting to get a little bit of under boob sweat, if you know what I'm saying. But what we wanna pay attention to here is obviously the temperature number and the core clock number. I have the other stuff up here so you can see how it relates. Are we thermal throttling due to temperature or are we, thermal throttle, or are we throttling due to power target? 
Also, I want you to keep an eye of what the fan percentage is here, and then GPU utilization is pretty much always gonna be at 100%. But we've got all those numbers up there so that you can see how they're correlating with each other to get a big picture of what's actually happening with the GPU. Now, as you can see, we started off here at 1,873 megahertz. It just boosted up right away, just boom. You can see our power usage here did hit 101 for a second. And as you can see, when that happens, this starts to come down. Our temperature is nowhere near our target yet, but our power usage is, and so that starts to come down. So you're gonna notice a few things happening here. It all It's a balancing act on the way th throttling actually works with the graphics card. It's not always temperature related, but more often than not, it could be. Now I have a couple of profiles set up here too, which 100% out of the box, which is what you're seeing right now. And then I have another profile set up, no overclocking or anything. It's just power target or power limit and our uh, temperature threshold. And what that will do is I will increase the temperature from the factory setting of 83, which is where it will start to thermal throttle. And then we're gonna raise that up to 92. And then I have got the power limit set to 120%. So we can exceed the power envelope designed by NVIDIA by 20% before it starts to pull back power due to power draw. But as you can see, while I'm just sitting here talking, our temperature has raised up to 78C and our core clock has dropped already from 1870 range down to 1810. But that's still higher than the advertised 1733 boost clock. But you can see we're now we're dipping down into the 1700s. But as you can see, just with that little bit of a battle, we're down to 1721. Our power limit is only at 85, 82. It's not even at 100, but you can see our thermals is sitting at 82. So we are now thermal throttling. So we've come all the way down to 1645 for a second there. So we're almost down to the base clock now. All right, well now you can see we're all the way down to 1620, between 1645 and 1620. So we've pretty much lost our boost clock now and we're pretty soon are gonna hit 1607. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply gonna change my profile here. And as you can see, by changing my profile, by letting the power target go up and the temperature target go up, we immediately went all the way back to 1797. And as you can see, we're not even throttling anymore. Well, okay, it bounced around a little bit. But you can see the fan speeds come up a little bit, temperatures come up to 86, so we're past that, and power limit has gone above 100% now. But look at what the clock is doing. The clock is staying much more stable. And I just died again. But look at that. Temperature still, or the core clock is still sitting at 1785. But the temperatures have, have gone up obviously a couple of degrees. But you can see if you give it just a little bit of extra temperature headroom, it will actually go up pretty high on the core clock. So all the way back up to 1797 again. Now what I want to point out here is the GPU is sitting at 66% fan speed, but it's actually really quiet. It's so much quieter than the other cards typically are. So now one other thing I want to do real quick, just to, just to see, obviously here, is I'm going to open up Afterburner, and I'm going to put the fan manually to what I did in my test, which was 80%. So the fan speed kicked up a little bit more. The noise came up a little bit, obviously. You can see the fan speed's now at 80%, but keep an eye on the temperatures right there. Do you see how now we're sitting straight at 1797 and it's not even moving? Now if we take a look right here at our core clock, as you can see, it is just bouncing all over the place. It started off nice and high at 1873 where we started the video 
And then it came all the way back down into very low, 1620, which is barely above boot, uh, the base clock of 1607. And then it's still just bouncing all around. But the second I increased right here, this to 120 and the temperature limit to 92, it didn't reach 92. As you can see, the highest temperature was 87. Yeah, still very, very hot. But I wanna point out that right here, you can see that we just stuck to 1797. Boom, and no longer throttled anymore. So it definitely is thermal based on the way the core clocks are kind of bouncing all around. Transition. Okay, so then why is this such a big deal? Well, quite honestly, I think Nvidia made the mistake of showing that 3D rendering demo and then pointing at the screen and saying, but it only runs 67C because that was very misleading in my opinion, where it's a gamer's card. It's not a card that's being boasted as being a productivity card, it's a gaming card. And you put a gaming load on it, especially with the Founders Edition cooler, even though it's a vapor chamber, with the fan profile that they have set up, it will thermal throttle. And it will thermal throttle back down to practically its base clock. But as you can see, by changing the temperature target and changing the power limit, we were able to bypass that and then get all the way up to 1800 and what? Well, 1797 megahertz on my card. And it only went up to about 87C. Now I say only because I allowed it to go to 92, but it didn't get there. So what that means is the thermal throttling is happening right at the upper echelon of where the limits are for that cooler. Now, the other thing you could obviously do, which is why I showed going to 80% on fan speed, although noisy, brought the temperature back down to the 70s, which is very, very manageable. So if you went in there and set up a custom fan profile so that it would ramp up and slow down, you would get the same result, as long as you increase the power target and the temperature limit, and you're not gonna allow thermal throttling to have any sort of real uh, factor in the way the card is performing, unless something's wrong with the cooler, then it's gonna try and keep itself from dying. Now, I think that the people are making a big deal of this, again, because of that demo, because the reality here is all of the reference cards in the history of the reference cards have done this. This is nothing new. In fact, people wouldn't even be making a point that it's thermal throttling if Nvidia didn't make the point that it's only 67C. So I do think there was a mistake made on that, that stage where there was a bit of an expectation planted in all of our minds followed by a big dis disappointment when it came to the reality of it's still a reference cooler that cannot keep these temperatures in check with the way they're shipped out of the box. You've gotta go in there and tweak some settings. Now the good news is the partner cards are launching literally in a couple of days and you're gonna start seeing custom designs like obviously from EVGA and Gigabyte and MSI and Zotac. They've all got their multi-fan heat pipe behemoth coolers that are going to keep things in check and be a hell of a lot quieter. Now remember, this was in an open air test bench, which means the only cooling factor on the card is the card itself. Case flow wasn't a factor. So if you have a small form factor case or even a regular enclosure of some sort, you might even see thermal throttling happening sooner and you might see it come down even farther depending on what your case flow is like. So I actually showed you best case scenario here, huh, no pun intended. I actually showed you best case scenario. So your results might actually be worse than mine. Anyway, guys, hope this video has helped shed some light on the thermal throttling that's happening here from NVIDIA. I'm not by any means saying, ah, it's not a big deal because it's happened on the older cards. I'm saying I think, I think it's a big deal because the temperatures were boasted as being very low. And unfortunately, that was not the real world scenario. But you can play around with the fan profiles at the sake of, or the sacrifice of noise, or just skip the Founders Edition altogether and go with a custom card cooler uh, from the likes of, you know, all of the board partners out there with multiple fans, or water cool it like I'm gonna do, and then just go balls to the wall on the clock. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video. Hope this video has helped. Anyway, time to get out of here. A bunch of people came at me saying, talk about the thermal throttling. I've done that. I hope you're happy now, so you can just zip it and just shut it because I'm gonna go now. It's a holiday weekend coming up. I'm gonna go have some fun. See you guys in the next video.